Alright, hey YouTube, I am back again for another video. This will be doing another homemade, um, homemade in this video, and I'll be going over something I did a uh, video on about a week ago, um, so that's probably what it's going to be in this video. So, now, um, I know I had said I've been making a lot of videos, and I've been doing a lot of a break, and I only ended up making one, although I did do a lot of work on projects, I just didn't get around to uploading videos, because I've been busy at the end of break doing a lot of homework and projects and such, um, for school, I, I should say. But um, now I do have another uh, design project I've done. Um, this is the design for this one, before I show it to you guys, is actually based off, I don't, you probably can't tell from looking at it, you might be able to, um, originally Aces, or um, now on YouTube is Candy Operative. I will probably put a link to his channel in the description below. Um, Candy Operative, his uh, snap bow, or sorry, no, snap carbine. Um, I really like the design for it. I didn't know how much I like it, but I ended up building one. But I didn't use K26 springs, I used two back-to-back, -back, um, what are they called, the Home Depot 24.5 uh, pound load springs, so there are a few issues in the design, so I would have to redesign a little bit to get the um, dimensions to work with those, and I also did my own stock, but it's uh, a lot of wood parts and it looks really nice, so here, here is the uh, blaster itself, um, the camera can pick this up. This, um, I really like this design. It's a very fun to use. Small, but it gets really good ranges. Um, I have, this has a, well, it gets uh, good ranges for its size, and uh, cocking length, I should say. It um, has back-to-back uh, -back two of the Home Depot 24.5 um, kilogram load springs. It has a little over three inches of compression and a one and a quarter inch plunger tube with a near-perfect seal. I'm going to cover it up with my hand to show you. Um, probably won't be able to do it as well with my hand as I could with the plug. But you can see in the camera there, cock and fire it again, that it, the seal is pretty good. That's just the air leaking out, but the seal in this is good. I've been working on that. It's been lubricated with silicone grease again, so it's working really well. Um, so the seal is good. Um, starting from the back, this right here, um, normally his design would incorporate a long stock made out of uh, one inch PVC, although I didn't like that design, I didn't have a lot of one inch PVC uh, lying around. The stock is sort of PVC stocks, I don't like as much, I don't know, maybe it's just probably per personal preference, but I do like the, um, well when I designed this blaster I noticed the cocking mechanism here, you can prime it back by taking your hand and just pulling back on this um, lever on the side, and that uh, pulls back the the plunger rod, which is another short length of a uh, one and a half inch, or one inch, I should say, uh, PVC. I don't want to get the one and a half inch number. I'm um, sorry, but that's the same as back here. This is um, this the spring goes back until the end of this, and the spring rest is in here. Normally, the spring rest would be inside the, this tube, and go all the way back for a stock. But I didn't like that. And when I finally finished designing this, I actually just had it end here, and I didn't have a stock. And I said, "Oh, look at the priming bar." This priming bar, well, I don't know what it's called on a real gun, whatever, or a real firearm, whatever you use to chamber the ra first round um, in a new magazine, um, it sort of looked like it would look on a Thompson submachine gun. So I uh, Google imaged a little bit, and I found what the stock would look like on some form of uh, sub submachine gun or such, and I uh, mechanically fastened that on in the same style I used for my crossbow. Um, thinner, it's a little thinner, but it, it's uh, still oak wood. Um, sand it down everywhere. It's really comfy. Same thing with the handle. They're actually the same type of wood. Um, they're really, really, really sturdy. They took a while to cut, but I love the feel of them. I mean, they don't wiggle around at all. They're very comfortable. Um, so the thing, uh, one of the, the elements of the design I had to change was, um, obviously the spring length, that would mean I'd have to have different amounts of compression in different dimensions, so I'd have to fiddle around with that. I measured out max compression. I'm very, very close to max um, compression with the spring. I think I'm a little under because I actually went too far and I had to move the um, the nail forward a little bit and you can't just move it at, like a millimeter because that interferes with the previous so it's hard to explain but I had to, it's like a millimeter or two off full compression which is, that's good but not perfect um, and so the one problem you encounter when you have st uh, two springs stacked on top of each other um, like the 24.5 pound load springs that I have um, when they're stacked on top of each other they want to, when they get, comp they're fine when they're un uh, compressed but when they start compressing and they bend, one wants to shoot one way and one wants to shoot the other. And the, the slot that is for the priming bar on this is actually a little bit big enough, so it's um, it's possible that uh, the spring could shoot out. And I was having trouble with that when they were compressing. 
So what I ended up doing was, um, the camera can pick this up, but this piece right here actually has um, a short in a uh, short length of CPVC, just enough so that it will go an up, uh, up to the uh, the front spring right here, so that they will both stay in line. And when you cock it back, please down for a second. When you cock it back, um, it goes back far enough so they uh, they line up but not uh, too far as they interfere with the uh, uh, priming bolt. So the cock up in the, um, the trigger is normally, unlike many other homemade designs, the trigger is actually not in the compressed position unless it's ready to shoot. So it's actually, the trigger is actually down until it's cocked and ready to fire. So, but that also means that you don't have to worry about getting a ramp, a good ramp or whatever for epoxy bunny or anything to cock it. So you can just right off the bat go like that and it cocks. So, if you notice right there, it um, it's compressed or pinched down, I should say. And when I fire it, it oh, shot a little bit of fire, but it um, it shoots down and it won't actually push up because it's pushing onto the uh, priming bar or the another priming bar. The it's pushing down onto the uh, plunger rod. Although the plunger rod in this is a lot thicker than it would normally be in a pump snap or the, any snap bar, so I don't really know what they call it, but um. Moving forward, the front bushing, I sanded down a little bit and then put in. So it's very, very snug on the front. Epoxy putty, the front bushing is getting a perfect seal. The um, Again, I showed you earlier, I was getting a, a perfect seal just with my, near, near perfect seal, with just my hand. So with a plug, this can get a pretty much perfect seal, maybe 99%. You can leave it for like 30 seconds and the thing will still move forward. So and that's air leaking out of the sides. But um, handle is oak. Stock is oak. It's mechanically fastened. Both of them, and they're very sturdy, and I love this thing. Um, the only thing I could say about this is that ranges, for better or worse, are actually not that phenomenal. Um, you can compare this as the exact same plunger size, uh, maybe a little bit bigger than a single long shot, but this is only using two of the Home Depot, so you could consider this to be like a single long shot with um, corresponding cut down K26, because these are about the same powers as K26. Um, or a segment of K26 that would fit in a single long shot, but this doesn't have any dead space, which is good. And it has a uh, near perfect seal, which is good. But I'll take a shot, and you can see that. Um, I'll shoot another one at my door, so you guys can get a better perspective. But this, um, I am using a, I believe this is a nine or ten inch barrel on this. Um, it's sort of in between. Uh, this is, I don't really know what to consider this. This is a somewhat shorter snap carbine, but it's. Sort of, I guess, a submachine gun you could consider if you're going to use real firearm terms, uh, but of a Nerf weapon. So you can check this out, and I can fire it uh, like this. And the, that bullet actually got caught in the barrel. I don't know why it didn't come out with that much force, but it is it's shooting very powerfully, and I really like this thing. But um, as I said with my last video, and if you can tell from the title right now, I think I will be selling this one too. Um, this selling of Nerf blasters, by the way, do not even begin to think this is me quitting or anything. I just honestly need parts, money to make, uh, get parts to make more of these because I'm running a little low on cash right now. But this will be, again, the last one. The last one hasn't sold yet, which is, I don't, uh, as of, this is the 28th, I believe. Um, the last one hasn't sold. But that is, I will put a link somewhere around here for um, the link to the video for my snap bow. But this will be for sale. Two, I will put the uh, for sale in this video until it sells. But um, I got a few offers on my last one. None of them were. Um, when none of them ended up be finalizing, so that is still for sale. I really recommend that. I do have a correction for the last video. Um, I will be back to this in one second. I believe I said that this does not have full compression, or not full compression. I believe I said this does not have a perfect seal, and I was wrong. I was somehow the plunger thing had gotten folded and it wasn't shooting well, but I fixed it up and also the barrel that used, I used to test the seal wasn't pushed in all the way. But if you push it in all the way and you cover it with your hand, that's significantly, that's near perfect seal. It's much better than it displayed last video. But um, again, and you can see that's very, very, very good seal. But I just thought I should say that before I go and as always, I will do another shooting and get this tight fitting thing out. Um, these hold up well. Um, I believe Godslayer 
just did, he just got back my um, bus ready for commission for him, and he'll be making a video shortly, if not already, and he can attest to my skill at doing homemades. Um, I hope he enjoys that. I haven't actually seen the video yet, but um, I hope, hopefully he can say positive stuff to anyone interested in buying something from me, because I put a lot of effort into making that for him. Um, so again, this will be for sale. Um, I will probably post this on Humans vs. Zombies. I'm considering making an account on some other Nerf forums as well. Um, probably Nerf Revolution. Uh, with not... Yeah, probably Nerf Revolution. Um, I might make a thread. I will want to make more of these. This is probably one of my favorite designs. Thank you, Ace, for the Snap Carbine design. I really like this blaster. Um, so a couple more shots for you guys, and I think this wraps everything up. So, there's one last shot. The streamlines are... These are newer streamlines in the barrel. When I make these, I actually, the last couple I've gotten lazy and not sanded down the CPVC as well um, when I was making them. So I just hammered the one half inch PVC around it without sanding it too much, which you would think would be bad because it tightens it and bad stuff happens to PVC when it gets too tight um, from my experience. But actually, I noticed that I have thinner fitting darts and if you hammer it in, you get it really tight and it scrunches the PVC around the bottom. You can put tight fitting darts or like for an air gun seal in the back and it holds them well in the back but once it gets past this inch it's really loose fitting so that and it makes good blow guns or guess, I guess or air gun fits you if you have a uh, one a thinner or less tight barrel fit I guess but um so here's one last shot and thanks for watching